If you're in year 11, you almost certainly did these during your year 10. But what I've got for you today is some feedback that actually most people got wrong in those tests. And if you can do better than what most people are doing, you, you do better at the bits that other people are failing, then your score is gonna be higher. Yeah, you, you'll... So these are five things from those mock exams in year 10 that the exam boards have fed back to us that you can be doing to make sure you get one of the higher grades at GCSE. Some year 10 tests. They took in all those grades, they took in who did well in which questions, and they've given us a feedback of the types of things that people are getting wrong. And if you are strategic with your GCSEs, you'll be looking for the things that most people get wrong and making sure you get them right, because that's gonna put you at the right point in that normal distribution, that statistical curve, how you're graded, that's gonna put you at the higher end and make sure you get the higher grades. Okay, so here we go, there are five things. First one, most people, for some reason, I weren't memorizing the equations. Now, I'm not surprised really because that's quite a new thing for teachers. Maybe your teachers didn't even realize that you need to memorize a list of equations. But there's no excuse because I'm telling you now, you need to memorize a list of equations for your exam board. Every exam board publishes them. You can find them really, really easily. And a simple way would be putting the, the equation sheet on your wall. I've got my A-level physics one behind me. I've got all my other physics equations actually on my classroom wall. And really, that's just a case of then using them. The more you actually tackle questions using those equations, the more they're just gonna sink into your longer term memory. Know what the algebra means, but memorize the algebra because it's simpler if you remember P is IV than power is current times potential difference. That's a longer thing to mem memorize. Lots of people in my classes, they like memorizing the triangles because then they can straight away rearrange it for any one of the three things. So think about that kind of formula triangle that you might use to rearrange them. That's a useful way to memorize them. Okay, number two, people weren't managing to memorize diagrams and set explanations well. Okay, so for example, the motor effect, and there's that catapult field diagram. Now that is a really useful diagram for explaining how or why a motor effect even, even happens. If you put that down where you have to explain the motor effect, then you're gonna get two marks straight away because you're gonna show, you know there's a permanent field and that there's a field around a current carrying wire and that's causing a force potentially. So maybe even three. Um, okay, so if you do that, if you memorize that detailed, detailed diagram, not just it kind of looks like that, and I know that's the diagram that kind of looks like that, then you're gonna be able to pick up marks by drawing diagrams. So really, really useful. Loads of the information in GCSE physics can be encapsulated in diagrams. Practice drawing them, practice writing set explanations, okay, so that you're ready just to get those marks in the exam. Look also for bits and bobs in your syllabus that are kind of common explanations. I'm thinking of one from the OCR gateway, which is explain how a microphone works or explain how a speaker works. Now that's gonna be a really simple six mark question if you've just memorized that explanation in the kind of level of detail that you need for the GCSEs. Tip three, there are some required or core practicals in your GCSE physics that you need to memorize. You need to know them by heart. Now what do I mean by that? You need to know what equipment you need to use, uh, all the details about the equipment, resolution, etc. why it's good, why it's not so good. Um, you need to remember the procedure, so that's a method, so you need to be able to write out a method for all of those core practicals straight away without even thinking about it. You need to think about the improvements, okay, how can you do these practicals better? Okay, what I mean by that is the evaluative points, that's going to be useful to you to get those really hard questions, how could a student improve this practical? It's usually going to be a practical you know, it's therefore going to be a pretty straightforward mark to get if you know the improvements already. And lastly, what's the maths you need to do? What's the mathematical models? What should the graphs look like? What do the gradients represent? That type of thing. What's the equations that you're applying? What's the analysis that you're gonna to have to do? Okay, so memorize those practicals in detail. And there's a couple of ways to do that. Well, um, making little flashcards of them would be really useful with just maybe those four headings, equipment, procedure, improvements, and maths, or mathematical models. Or you could redo them, because maybe it's been a while since you actually did them in class. Maybe you did them in year nine, and you kind of forgot that. So ask your teacher, is it all right if we actually redo some of these practical circuits? We can't remember doing them. Or actually write them up again. Maybe even if you can't redo them in class, find a simulation online that you can actually re redo the um, practical, but virtually, and then write it up as a full practical. Number four, extended writing in timed conditions. 
Now actually, some of those year 10 papers people weren't even finishing because they weren't fast enough at writing the extended writing questions. That's the typically the six mark questions, okay? Although there are in the new syllabuses extended writing, which is not six marks, so it's still level of response marking, but it's not a six mark question. But luckily there's no shortage of six mark questions because they were a really big thing in the last syllabus, the one that's just gone. So if you find some six mark questions from the old one, if you find some past papers from your old syllabus, they will have six mark questions, find them, set the timer on, six minutes, try your best to get as many marks as possible, look at what you could have done, and just try and keep doing that and keep improving. Tip five is actually applying their knowledge. People were struggling when they were given a difficult context to apply their knowledge. And they're not surprised by that because describe, explain, apply. That's, that's quite a difficult skill. You're already at the grade five, grade six level skills when you're applying stuff. So you've got to get used to applying the physics that you know. And the way I suggest you do that is to read loads, watch loads, and try and apply the physics that you know to that. Actually, in GCSE physics, we've given you a pretty broad understanding of all the physics that we use, okay? So most articles about physics or videos about some interesting context of physics will involve some of your GCSE. You maybe don't know it at the deepest possible level. You maybe don't know all the complicated algebra that you're gonna get at A level and, and at university but you can still apply the area of the topic to do at least some of that explanation. Or just think about the stuff that's around you. Like have a chat when you're driving in, in the car with your parents or something. Try and explain how the motor works. Explain how the motor charges with them. Because you know that now. It is in your GCSE. You know that level of detail. So actually getting used to thinking, oh yeah, all right, the alternator in a car is actually just electromagnetic induction. I can explain that. I can explain permanent magnetic field, moving coil of wire, induces a current. I'm, I hope that was useful. I'm Kit Batch Masters. This is Gorilla Physics. We're all about you understanding more, so you enjoy your physics more, so you get more confidence, so you're going to do better in your exams, okay? Those were five tips to make sure you do better than other people in your exams. <laughs>